Hello friends, my name is Habib. Today we are going to learn how to create a cookie eater game in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Before you watch this video, make sure you have a basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So anyways, first you have to open up VS Code, go to File, Open Folder, Documents, and I create a new folder, naming it Cookie Eater. Uh, open the new file, naming it index.html, index.css, index.js, HTML5. Write HTML5 in the index. Uh, HTML to generate this. Now link the HTML to the CSS. Rel equals style sheet to give it some style. Wait, no, href not source, href not herf. Href equals index.css script source equals index.js slash script. Now copy the pass of the copy the pass of the uh, HTML file, paste it to the browser, and then you're going to see a blank page. Pretty cool, right? Well, not really. So, anyways, first I have to add the cookie. I'm going to create a div, giving it an ID of cookie. Save, reload. And you see that nothing shows that is because i have to style the div so write div wait no i mean hashtag cookie it's going to have a width and height of 300 pixels and height of 300 pixels and it's also going to have a background color of burly wood Save it, reload, and now you see you have a pretty big rectangle cookie. Jokes aside, this isn't really a cookie. It's just, a, just, just. So that's so I went at the border radius of one hundred percent, which basically makes the rectangle to turn into a circle. So, anyways, if we click on it. Then nothing really happens. It just does nothing. I want it so that when we click on this cookie, it is going to become smaller and smaller until it disappears. Poof. So first, like always, I have to get the ID of the cookie by writing documents. So get element by ID cookie. Want it so that on click when the cookie is clicked, it's going to run the function called at. Then I'm going to write function at console.log at we know at whatever reload go to the console now click on the cookie now you see that it says at when we click on the cookie which proved which i just did that to see if it will work so now we can get on the actual thing cook dot style dot width minus equals something like 10 and then copy that and paste it here So I'm going to create a variable called cook underscore sz, which will be equal to 300. And then I'm going to set the cook dot style dot width and then the height to be is equal to is equal to dollar sign as cook. 
hook underscore as z pixels i do the same for the height pixels now let me click on this nothing happens but if i change it to something like uh 100 for example no no 100 reload now you see that when we click on it it becomes smaller so that means we can remove these two lines since they're useless i also want it so that it would it would set the size to this variable before it uh I want to set the size to this variable before we click on the cookie, so I'm going to do that. And now I could just write cook underscore as z minus equals and then whatever I want it to be. Which in my case, it's going to be 50. Now you see that when I click on the cookie, it becomes progressively smaller until it just disappears. anyways but this pretty unsmooth it just does that so i'm going to add a transition to make it more smoother just write transition no 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 uh tab transition transition uh 0.1 seconds reload now you see that when you click on it instead of just instead of just just immediately becoming smaller has a sort of animation for it becomes smaller now this is pretty uncool because we want it so that we'll be able to keep eating the cookie forever so i'm going to create a button that if you press it the cookie is going to let's say something like regenerate going to become uneaten button says reset and give this an id of Wait, no, I don't need to give it an idea. I'm just going to write on click is equal to reset. And now I'm going to write function. Wait, no, not that. Function. Function. Reset. It's going to set the cook underscore as Z to 300. So now if I reload this click on this reset button eat it eat 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 anyways you see that instead of you know uh, just resetting it we have to click on it before it resets it why because we have to set the width and height. And we set. We have to set the resets, the width and height also. Reset. Reset. Now I can now I can eat it as much as I want, and then, bam, let's do it again. Now I also want a button that makes it so that when I click on it, it the cookie will become bigger. Button. Big. And then on click, on click is equal to big. Or should have wrote bigger. Whatever. It's not like anybody cares. Function big. Control V. The cook underscore S Z stands for size. It's going to plus equals. No, no, no not three hundred. That's too much. Uh, it's something like two fifty. Now, if we click on this big button, the cookie is going to become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Then I can eat it so it can become smaller again. Nom. Now, you see, we already have something pretty cool, but you need to add some style to these buttons. I've got my old style button. I have to increase the padding, the... the the thickness of the button by wait no 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 i mean i have to set the thickness of button so the pixels big button this button is the big button is not really big it's pretty small but nobody cares and i'm just going to set the uh, background color to crimson finally 
And Carter finally don't lose Cornflower Blue again. I'm gonna be pretty delighted about that. I'm also going to make it lighter by dragging this lighter here. Now, if your editor doesn't have that feature, then just write the exact RGB values. I'm also going to set the border to uh, 2 pixels solid, and maybe, and maybe it's going to be like coral, but a bit darker. There we go, the buttons are looking much better. I also have to make it bigger. Like, uh, uh, maybe something like 25 pixels, 25 pixels is a pretty cool number. But then I have to make it more round, or like a circle, so I could set the border radius to, uh, no, no, to, not 29, 20 pixels, which makes it more rounder. Big, big reset. Big, big reset. I also want to change the background color. Body. Background color is equal to. Wait, let me set the background linear gradient. Eh, whatever, I'm just gonna set the background to linear gradient. Cornflower blue. Cornflower blue again. Cornflower, uh, no. Cornflower, no. Cornflower blue again, but this time lighter. Now I see that the background, yeah, it has a not so beautiful gradient. Background, wait, no. Background. Repeat. Wait, no. Uh. Repeat. Background repeat. No repeat. Now you see that the background doesn't repeat. But the reason why it didn't work is because, as well. These are all the elements we have on our page. So it's bound to not work. That one size cover. And then background repeat. Background repeat, no repeat. Background size. Team. What is it? The background. What is it? The background color to cornflower blue. Cornflower blue. Reload. Now I see that the entire background is cornflower blue. I'm going to make the background color lighter. Now you see it's a light version of cornflower blue. So, anyways, that is it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel, Obacode. Bye!